Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I have brought you a series of videos on how I constructed my cashmereette Upton dress that you can see me wearing here. Um, I'm really pleased with it. It's turned out very nicely, I think. This is the, I made one twile first before um, on the bodice, um, but I didn't twile the rest of it, so I wasn't quite sure whether it was going to suit me or not. Um, but actually, I'm really quite pleased with it. I think it's going to be lovely for summer um, over here in Spain. Um, but also, I think that it actually, I would class this as being almost a special occasion dress. So I've actually changed it. I didn't realise that I was doing that at the time because the main pattern isn't lined on the skirt, whereas I have lined it on the skirt. The other thing that I've done is I've added a, a waist stay as well to the dress. Um, and I talk about that in the construction. So um, this is the finished dress. I hope you like it too. I'm very pleased with the fit of it. Um, it's a lovely dress to put together. The pleats take a little bit of working out, but I've got some tips to help you with that as we go through the video. Um, and I hope you really enjoy watching me sew. Today I am starting to cut out the cashmere upton dress. I have the pattern just here. And um, this is the pattern that I'm going to be making. I'm actually going to do view A, which is this one here, which is sleeveless as a sundress, and then I'm going to have the pleats in as well. I'm not going to include the pockets because I don't want to add that extra um, material and fabric on, on, on my hips because I've got a, just, a, just a consciousness that that might be there and I don't really need um, pockets in, a, in, a, in this sundress. So um, I'm going to be making this one here. Um, I bought the pattern online and then what I've done, that was £16.50 in the UK. I can't remember where I bought it. Oh, I don't. Um, I bought it from So Wardrobe in Ashby, um, Ashby de la Zouche. Um, so that's what I'm going to be making today. So what I've done is I have chosen my fabric already. And this is quite a versatile pattern because you can make it in either something um, light and floaty or you can make it in something quite structured, even in upholstery fabric if you want those pleat, that pleated skirt to really stand out and really have some, some drama to it. The fabric I've chosen is this one here lovely turquoise with these orange, red and yellow flowers on it. And it's actually almost like a georgette. It's um, a um, polyester fabric, I believe. I got this at £2.50 a metre from Sewing Bee in Stapleford. There's a link to another video in, on my channel for um, a quick tour around Sewing Bee. And yeah, I've got three metres of this. It was £2.50 a metre. So hopefully I can get a really cost-effective skirt out of it, and um, skirt, dress out of it. Because as I say, the pattern was £16.50. And then I've also bought the expansion pack, which is sleeves. It's um, a, a the, the main pattern is for a darted bodice. And this would then, the expansion pack gives me a princess seam bodice, which I think I prefer, well, I know I prefer on me anyway. Um, and it is made for curvy girls anyway, so that should be quite good. I did put my measurements, so I took my measurements for my tape measure, high bust, full bust, waist and hips, and I popped that into um, Jenny Rushmore's calculator on her size. So Jenny Rushmore is cashmerette. And that put me through at a size 14 with an E to F cup. So that's fine, That's that, that kind of worked out okay. And what I did was I went ahead and I made a twelve just of the bodice, just to see how that was going to fit. Um, I'm not gonna show you pictures of that because it's obviously, it was just at the beginning stages. So this is my twelve. And what I actually did, so I just, I'm not lined it, it's not anything else, just single fabric. I used quite a light fabric because I wanted it to have um, a similar drape to the fabric that I'm going to be making my dress into. Um, and I did that at a size, um, 14 and then it actually told me to draft out um, to grade out to a size 16 at the waist so I did that by grading between the lines and what I found was that actually it was felt a bit loose on me especially because I think that the lighter the fabric the the more fitted it needs to be because there's there's not the bulk of the actual fabric there so um, what I found myself doing is if I show you on here is I actually did another seam line about half a centimeter in from the original one. So that's the inside line is my second one. The, the outside line is my first twirl. And that fitted really well. I was really pleased. Um, lots of coverage around the arm here. Um, so no side boob showing, which is great. Um, and that fits really well. Now, because I, 
I did that half a centimetre all the way down, even down to the waist, what I've actually done is I've actually gone back to the pattern and I've retraced it and I've done a size 12 and I've then drafted and um, graded out to a size 14 at the waist. I've then cut out uh, and I'm then going to cut out a size 14 waistband and the size 14 skirts. So that should all work for me quite nicely. Now, because I didn't change the length of the shoulders, what I've actually done is I've actually cut out the size 14 on the on the shoulder length. Um, I know I do have a slightly rounded back from what I, from um, measurements and garments that I fitted previously. So I've kept that at a size 14 on the top of the shoulder, so I've done that front and back. The other thing I noticed when I had my toile on, and it's not uncommon on, on me, is that I'm quite shallow on the chest here. There's not a lot of tissue there, carry all my bulk further down. And so what I did then is do what's called a dart to be gone. Oh, sorry, kicked the, the chair. Um, a dart be gone, which is where you pinch out a small amount and then you take it down to nothing by the time it gets to the seams. So there's nothing taken in there at all, but just about a centimetre is gone at that point there. So that's what I've done on both sides of my, my chest. If I just pop this on over the top of this dress, you'll just have a little, little look. It can be a bit fiddly, can't it, to, to sort these out. But you can just see that at this point just here, I've just pinched those bits out. Obviously, this sits up properly on my shoulders when it's on. You, know, you just have to trust me that it fits. Um, and then that's quite nice round the back, um, round through the underarm and round through the back as well. Once it's got the weight of the skirt holding it down. And these these um, creases that here, or wrinkles here, I'll sort out on the actual final fitting. It's close enough, so I'm happy with that. Um, the other thing that I did have to do let me just go and fetch my pattern piece. I won't be one second. Hold on. So one thing that I did do is I've actually lowered the bust point. So if you can see here, I've overlapped, I've taken out a square of fabric, a square of um, my tissue paper here for my pattern tracing. And I've just dropped this curve here down by an inch. I've then redrawn from just, just probably just about here to then pick up the rest of the curve because I carry my weight lower down. So as I say, when I did that on the toilet, it fitted really well. So that's what I've done again on this size 12. And again, I've, I've just drafted out this, this um, curve here on the pattern piece stays the same and it just changes at the outside here. So this is a 14 here, but a 12 here. So I've just literally marked that on the pattern, marked that on the pattern, and then I've just graded down, just drawn my line down to between the two. So you just kind of blend it. So I just thought um, I'd just um, pop on and just give you an introductory video and say what I was doing. Hopefully it's of interest to you. I'll take you along with me on the journey as I'm sewing this up and um, hopefully in the future I'll be able to show you on, the, on any more fitting that I do. Um, and we'll see how I get on. Hopefully I'll have a lovely summer dress by the time that we've finished. So bear with me and um, let's see how we get on. So I've just turned the camera around because I'm actually in the process of tracing my pattern pieces off onto um, tracing paper. Here I've got the skirt pattern that I've started to draw. You might not be able to see my lines, but they are there. Um, and what I thought I'd just show you is that I'm actually um, in my kitchen. I've got a breakfast bar and it makes a fabulous cutting table. Um, it's just at the right height um, for me on the hips. Could probably do the being a little bit higher, but it's got to, it's, it, is, it is originally designed as a kitchen um, island. And actually my hob is, is, is under here, underneath this mat. And I've got some um, felt backed table protector that I use just by putting it over and it's on a on a big roll, it's probably two and a half, three metres long, this um, table protector is. And it's absolutely fabulous because it's it's thick enough that I can, I can um, not pin into it, but, but it doesn't matter if my pins touch the plastic side of this because it doesn't scratch the underneath. And then the foam just, just protects the work surface and just makes sure everything's fine. So what I've done is I've just um, getting my um, pattern pieces out and I'm just tracing those off. Now, I do always trace my pattern pieces off because I like to keep the original pattern intact. That way, I don't know if you're the same, but I find that my size fluctuates as I get older or have, you know, good years, bad years, whatever you want to call it, but my size fluctuates. So if I keep the pattern, which is a multi-size pattern, this one is 12, size 12, two, 
size 12 to 28 and cup sizes C to H. And again, cup sizes can change in time as well. Um, then what it means is that in the future, if I want to make this dress again, I can just trace off the new pattern and use that again. Likewise, um, when I've changed my, my bodice piece here, if I were to make this pattern for somebody else, they might not need their bust point lowering. And if I've cut into my original pattern, I can only use it the once. Whereas if we use the tracing paper, then that's fine. If you can't find tracing paper, but you can get it quite easily on Amazon, um, then you can use greaseproof um, baking paper. That works quite well, although the sellotape doesn't stick too well to it. Um, but it, it is it's still doable. Um, or you can check, check any art supply shops, that type of thing, you can usually find it. Um, yeah, so you can find that. So yeah, anything you can see through to be able to trace is perfect. And as I say, I just trace that off. It means I could do my alterations and then the original pattern stays intact. So that's what I'm just doing at the moment. But I thought I'd just, excuse if I've got any parts here, just, just a glass or two, ignore all those. Um, it's, just, um, it's just to show you that really, we can be flexible and adaptable with where we work, but we've got to protect our back. So just be careful um, with leaning over too much that you, you've got that, um, that, that height of your work surface right. The other thing that I have done before is if I'm using a, um, a temporary table, I've used like a heavy duty plastic table before, a white one, sometimes you get them a bit like pasting tables for DIY projects. On that one, um, if it's too low for me, and sometimes it is, I've actually raised the legs up by putting a can underneath each of the legs, the four legs. Now, just remember that if it's got one of those tops where you can pull the ring pull and pull it back, you need to just make sure that you use the other side of the can where it's the solid bottom on it. Just, just turn the can upside down. Because the trouble is if you um, press too hard where it's already been made easy, it's been etched, hasn't it, to make it easier to ring pull the top back, then you might go through it and, and that's going to be a right mess to clear up. And if you're wanting to get on with your sewing, then um, that's going to be a real um, nuisance for you, isn't it? So that's another top tip if it's, if it's just to raise your table if you can do. If you've got a handy um, person around who knows how to use a drill and a saw and what have you, you can always make a bench and a bit of a platform to sit your table legs on. Again, just to lift it so it's at the right um, height for you. But as I say, this breakfast island is perfect for me, so I'm just going to carry on and trace out this pattern. So just before I carry on with the um, tracing of this pattern, I just wanted to show you this is the kind of tin that I was talking about. So where it's got a ring pull on the top, that's slightly weaker on the top, I, I think, anyway, for pulling, because of when you pull the can off. So always make sure that you use the other side of your can, turn it upside down, so you're not using the ring pull side, using that side, if you do have to put anything underneath your, your table legs, then put your table leg on top. Or the other thing I've done before is use a can and use a drinks coaster and put that on top. Obviously, you need to be careful not to push your table too far over because you don't want to um, topple the whole thing over. But that does, you'd be surprised how much difference just that amount of elevation makes on a standard table. Um, the other thing that I was going to talk to you about as well is um, pattern weights. Um, I've got a selection here that you can use. Um, for spice tins uh, or spice jars work very well. Again, just for holding your pattern pieces down on top of your pattern and giving you some weight just while you're um, tracing it off. I do find that if you use what just one pattern weight, your pattern has a tendency to twist Whereas as soon as you put a second pattern weight on, you've got much more stability and it doesn't then, then twist quite as much. So do make sure that you use enough pattern weights. You can buy ones like this. This was a very lovely gift from my sewing buddy Tara on one of our sewing holidays that we've been on. And if you want to look more about our sewing holidays, then have a look at my other videos on the channel because I've done a, a quick video about our Sew Away 2022 that we had this year. Um, otherwise, I've got these beautiful stones that have been painted and these were painted for me by my um, school friend who I've been in touch with recently again called Louise and Louise thank you very much for these beautiful painted stones as you can see they are exquisite and if anybody wants anything similar to this just let me know and I'll pop Louise's details in the bottom if she agrees I'm sure she will um, but yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? And they work very nice. She's chosen some nice flat ones. They've got a bit of weight to them as well, so they, they work well. Otherwise, 
This is the other kind of pattern weight that is really good and works well. And this is one of those pyramid ones. Um, I've made this just out of a scrap of fabric. Very, very easy to do. It's mostly machine sewn and actually it doubles up as a pin cushion as well um, if you just want to put some pins in it. So that's very easy. If you just search for pyramid um, pattern weight or fabric pattern weight, then that will tell you. It's filled with rice. I think you can fill them with walnut, um, walnut shells as well, which... Um, I use for lizard lizard bedding, I believe. Something like that anyway, or in, um, I don't know, terraniums, is that what they're called? I think so. Um, so anyway, that, they're really good as well for putting putting down. So let me just show you what, what I do when I'm tracing. So this is my skirt pattern. Let me just pop this one out of the way for the moment. So I've traced off the back of the back skirt already so I need to look for my front skirt piece and I'm doing view A which is the pleated skirt hopefully you can hear me over all the rustling I'm talking a bit louder so you can smooth your pattern out just make sure you've not got any wrinkles in it any wrinkles in it will affect the way that the pattern fits so you do need to make sure that is if you look at the difference between the sizes especially down here they're just millimetres difference. So if you've got a, a crease in the middle of your pattern, you can also use a dry iron to, to iron your pattern, or just a warm dry iron, and that also will work well, just to flatten that out. So once you've got your pattern flat, you can then choose your piece of tissue paper. That one's not big enough. I've used that one. I've to extend it slightly for the piece I did for the other skirt. Just smooth it over again, make sure there's no creases or wrinkles. You can feel them with your hand, it's a bit like when you're ironing fabric. I'm just going to extend this pattern, this piece of paper slightly. It's not quite long enough. Find my scissors. These are paper scissors. And then we then pop this underneath here and just sellotape it. Now, just a little tip as well, try and sellotape it where you're not going to be pinning because the stickiness from the sellotape can have a tendency to stick on to the bottom of your pins and that then just makes it difficult. I do like using scotch tape, which is scotch magic tape, but the um, Stationers didn't have any stay when I went, well, well they did, but it was extortionately expensive. So I'm making do with um, sellotape at the moment, and that will do for me. So I'm just sticking these, I've just cut off a strip of paper, just to extend the paper that I'm working with, so that it's long enough for the hem of the pattern. So I'll just I'll take that down. Make sure that we've got all of the pattern front and back without any ruffles in and then we can then just put our pattern weights around and about just to hold that down for us what we do then i've got a french curve here which i do find to be very useful and i'm using a pen and literally all i'm going to do now is follow the lines of the pattern through the fabric. I'm actually doing this in pen. You can do it in pencil if you want, but it's up to you, whatever you want to do. And I am just extending down the length of the skirt because I want this one to be quite long. You can freeform the edges if you want to. Now the Upton dress on here, if we have a little look at the pattern, if we have a look at the pattern pencil drawing on the back here, this actually shows you where your seam lines are as well. 
So on here, we can see that there's actually a seam centre front and centre back. Now, that's because not all of the fabric that we can buy ha is wide enough to take this um, pattern piece because of the pleats. And what I've done is I've measured my fabric up against the edge of the pattern skirt piece, which is the, the widest one. And actually, I can get my pattern piece in one go. So I can place mine on the fold and eliminate that centre front pleat. The only thing I've got to remember is, though, that um, the pattern has allowed for half an inch seam allowance. So I actually need to inset the fold of my pattern piece by half an inch in order to eliminate that seam. I'll show you what I do when I, when I cut it out anyway, just so that you can see that. But I just thought I'd let you know that, again, we can use the pencil drawing on a pattern to be able to decide things like that and then measure it up and, and use your your common sense or your experience really in order to work out what's best for you and for your fabric. So there's nothing special about this, it's purely back to your Blue Peter days, for those of you old enough to remember Blue Peter. Protect your back, and I'm stretching a little bit, but if you've got problems with your back just please do be careful. And if you're lucky enough to have a cutting table as well, well, that is a luxury, isn't it? Very jealous, in a nice way, of course. Um, but good for you, because I know that, that makes a huge difference. But luckily, when I'm doing my cutting out, as long as nobody's starving hungry, then nothing is spoiled. I'm making sure I do is mark on any notches that we've got on the pattern that are showing along here. And then I can also lengthen the shorten lines and put those on the pattern in case we need those in the future. I don't think I'm going to need that for this pattern because I'm going to do it because it's quite a thin fabric that I'm using. I want it to be quite long and floaty. This is the plan anyway. So let's just... Um, have a look and see how they're getting on. We actually learned how to sew at school when I was younger. We had classes at school, but only until I think I was about age 13, 14. And then they stopped because we had to take our options. And unfortunately, although I wanted to carry on with my dressmaking, there weren't enough people in the class who also wanted to take it. And also, and it's not that long ago since I was at school, I distinctly remember that one of the girls in our class, I can't remember her name, I wish I could actually, she wanted to do, um, she wanted to do technical drawing and she wasn't allowed to do it because she was a girl. I mean, that, I mean, I'm 55 this year, so it's not that horrendously long ago. But to, for somebody to be told that they can't do technical drawing now because they're a girl would be absolutely unheard of. Um, but it was in our day. That does make me sound very old, doesn't it? And all I'm doing on here as well is, because sometimes it's difficult to remember which way around the pleats go, uh, which direction they go. So I'm actually going to put two notches close together on my pattern piece on the edge side of the pleat marking, trying to get my words right, sorry. So that will tell me that that pleat goes towards the side that is the two pleated cut. <laughs> Hopefully it will all make sense when I come to, to come to make it, but we'll, I might refer to that later on. So I thought I'd mention it now and then that will remind you. It's just little tips, isn't it, all the way along the line, just to tips for success. Drawing in all of these pleat lines. And what I'll probably end up doing is tacking these down because, again, whilst I'm um, sewing my dress together, because pleats actually can have a tendency to open up or to fold out, when you, especially when you don't want them to. And so, just by putting some tacking stitches in those, it'll just hold them together for me long enough so that I'll be able to do that. So yeah, that's everything done from this side. Let me just pop that onto the other side again. Now, another top tip. 
Always write down what your pattern is. So this is a cashmerette, Upton. The size, this is, this is a size 14 skirt. If it was a blender between one size to another, I would put down size 12 to 14 or 16 to 18 or whatever. So it's size, size 14 skirt. It's view A, pleated, just so that I remember. And also I'll put down that it's half an inch seam allowance on there as well. What else do I need to put on there? Oh, skirt front. That also always helps, doesn't it? Um, on the other one, did I put the skirt back on the other one? Just checking. No, I didn't, right. Skirt back, okay. Anything you can put on there just to help you will always help you remember where you are with everything. So we take our pattern weights off now. We've got it transferred onto our paper. It's up to you so you can have a look. And then if you have a look just here, hopefully you can see, I've just done an extra little notch just there and a single one there. So the pleat will come forward to that point there, creating a fold in the fabric. And then I will push the fabric towards this side here because the arrow is pointing for which side that fabric has to, has to lay. Hopefully it all makes sense. It will do to me anyway. So let's pop this back on here now. Let's try and fold this back up again. Again, if, you've, if you have ironed this, then it does make it slightly easier. And there is a bit of a knack, I'm sure, to folding this up. Just something about working with tissue paper, isn't there? It's just, <clears throat> it's just lovely. Definitely makes your creative juices flow, I think. It's a bit like the sound of um, scissors cutting through fabric, isn't it? That's always a, a lovely sound too. Right, so let's fold this up as best as we can do. And we'll have a look in our pattern booklet to make sure that we have got all of our pattern pieces. So, front bodice, back bodice. So I've got the princess seam, so I've got a centre front. Oh, can't see me. I've got a centre front and a side front, and I've got a centre back and a side back, so I know I've got those already. Front waistband and back waistband, got those. Front skirt and back skirt, and then front side skirt, view B. No, I've not got any of that, so all view B. And the pocket, I'm not doing the pockets. So that's all I've got. So not too many pieces. So let me get my fabric, and then we'll talk about my fabric and about how I'm going to cut that out. So. Bear with me and I'll be back in a second.